Hello, my loves. Welcome back to Bahati Life Podcast. My name is Jessica Alexandria. I'm the creator and head witch of Bahati Life Apothecary and, of course, professional astrologer, tarot, and intuitive reader. Thanks for tuning in with me once again. As you guys know, we are going to be diving into this full moon that is happening in the sign of Leo. This is going to be February 5th roughly around 1.29 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. However, I have the charts pulled up for 1.11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time because that's the vibe for me at least. <laughs> you guys know that I uh, refer to myself, my research, and my own chart pullings as I'm pulling these charts. All information that it is I've gathered here is something that has come from my own personal studies and is what I'm sharing with you along with intuitive messages that I may or may I'll be channeling. Okay, so guys, like I said, we're going to be discussing the full moon in Leo and let me tell you, there is a lot to discuss. We have an actual square that's happening in the cosmic uh, skies and we have a full moon lighting up the skies. Yeah, this could potentially be explosive. But of course, I'm with you and I will not only give you very detailed details on what to expect from this full moon, but I will help you to plan, prep, and how to manifest with this with this full moon so you can make this energy work for you and not against you. So having said that, let's go ahead and dive right in. Welcome to the Hottie Life Podcast, your source for authentic astrology predictions, tarot, and intuitive readings, May this message reach you with divine timing and bless you along your path. So like I said, you guys, we have the full moon that is happening in the sign of Leo. Now, what happens with full moons is the sun is on one side and then the moon is on the exact opposite and the light from the sun lights up the moon and then reflects the moon reflects that surface and basically what this energetically means for us here on earth is that a lot of energy will be revealed. I am a little concerned because, um, and I'm going to start with the bad news first. Is that okay? Is that okay if I start with the bad news first? I'm a little concerned because there's been a lot that's been going on in humanity. And as I'm looking at this chart right now, I can see a really strong potential for eruptions of any and all sorts. So this could represent actual physical eruptions in our earth. But if I'm being honest with you, I see this more in politics and government and also big business. For some of you guys, you might be scratching your head and just be like, well, Jess, why would I be concerned about what's happening in big business and politics and government? Well, because ultimately it will end up impacting you. So I want to go ahead and start with that. This full moon for sure is going to light up some type of trouble, tension, chaos when it comes to our government or governments because it's not just the United States. The fact that the sun is transiting through the sign of Aquarius is emphasizing the energy of the people, what is for the betterment of the people, but I'm also seeing that it could very much uh, light up um, potential, I don't, is game plan the right word? It's like intentions behind people who are ruling over the people. Is humanity being protected right now? And how is humanity being handled? How is humanity being dealt with? When the sun is transiting through the sign of Aquarius, we have no choice but to look at the future of humans and how we connect to each other and how we help or hinder each other. And when this full moon is happening in the sign of Leo, the intentions of the powers that be are buku called into question. When I take a step back and I look at all of the, the transits that have already happened thus far, we have Saturn transiting through the sign of Aquarius. Saturn represents politics and business, but rules and regulations and structure. And it has been Aquarius energy and Capricorn energy because of Saturn and because of Pluto has been really taking the hammer when it comes to crazy changes that have disrupted our day-to-day -day life. We see this in humanitarian causes. We see this in how the people are being protected or turning into victims 
um, not by their own will, but because the powers that are at the top mm, are not wielding their power in a way that is justified, fair, controlled in a way like it's it's not coming from a positive place and this is not anything new it's just being revealed and it has been revealed in the last few years i know that you guys are probably so sick to death of hearing about government and hearing about these organizations the police and businesses and, and politics and all those other things but it's just the times right now I, it's exhausting to talk about but i would be doing you a disservice if i didn't actually bring it up again in this podcast because this full moon again is going to light that energy up as i'm looking at the chart again saturn is nearing the final um degrees of aquarius and why this is so important is because the sun is also sitting in the sign of aquarius and all of these the, those two planets are going to be directly, almost directly aspecting the full moon or the, the actual moon and the sun definitely will be directly aspecting the full moon and Pluto, even though it's not directly aspecting this full moon, its influence is still here in the cosmic skies impacting us here on earth. So Pluto now being in the final degrees of Capricorn has been doing the most when it comes to transforming our government, businesses, organizations, those types of things, hospitals even. Remember a few years ago, well, a lot more than a few years ago, I started talking to you guys about the breakdown of hospitals. And now even nurses and doctors and those types of things, those those conversations about how they're being treated and their workload is big time called into called into question. They've been revolting. They've been standing up. Why? Because the it the the system has not been fair. Not only is it not fair for the workers, the employees, but it's not fair for the patients who are going in and needing help. There's another thing too about health insurance. I'm definitely seeing an in, in impact of this full moon on this idea of health insurance and how we're able to take better care of our health and what systems are set into place in order to make sure that every single person, what, regardless of their income, regardless of their gender, their their race, et cetera, et cetera, has equal access to care and treatment. And that's something that has not been fair for a really long time. So I can truly see that that's even another topic that would be activated by the energy of this full moon. And that's on a larger scale. On a smaller scale and more positive news, I can say that for many of you guys, something is being brought into your awareness. Something is being brought into your awareness. There's something here that you cannot brush past anymore. I don't think that it was your intention to brush past this reality or this level of awareness or this acknowledgement or this rise. I'm, al I'm also hearing like rise in fame. So something that is brought in a big way to your attention, you're going to have to start addressing it or finding a way to whatever this normal is, make it work for you. This is going to encourage, encourage you or pull you into a space where you're going to have to explore all the different options, all the different ways that you can turn this normal or turn this awareness into a key that opens a door for you. If not, your hands are going to be shaking as you hold this key because you're going to be like, holy shit, I don't know what to do with this information. I don't know how to help myself. I don't know what to do here. This full moon is going to activate whatever it is that needs to be called into your awareness. It can be a relationship. It can be business um, changes and business developments. It can be finance, finances or your spending. It could be your saving. It could be the stock market. It all depends on where this full moon is falling within your chart. So I would encourage you to check out um, your natal chart. Pull up Leo, well, pull up your chart and see where Leo falls within your chart. It's like this little red line, little squiggly line. It's real cute. Um, yeah, see where, where that is happening. And also keep your eyes on Gemini energy. Keep your eyes on Aquarius energy. Actually, fucking, like, I'm not even going to lie to you. Every, most, most of these planets are just in a position where they're just triggering a lot going on in this chart um okay so on a positive note right so you are something is being pulled into your awareness for some of you guys it is not the worst case scenario fear that it is that you've been sitting with there has been an illusion that has been looming around so many of us and what happens is that this illusion 
even though it's not real, quote unquote, you guys can't see this if you're tuning into the podcast, but I've got air quotes going on here. This illusion, even though it's not real, it actually represents some of your shadow fears. It actually is mirroring to you your insecurities. And the best thing that you can do actually is to confront these monsters in your closet. The illusion itself can represent as fear or anxiety or depression or some type of feelings of grandeur or whatever the case is, but it represents the subconscious. It represents something that you may be struggling, that you might be grappling with within yourself. And you don't want to spend too much looking at the, the illusion itself. You want to look past and beyond the illusion to actually see what the root of this problem is or the root of what we can fix here Again, ask questions, be curious, be open. That way you can find a solution. For example, let's say you have a bad habit of choosing um, in of unavailable partners or you have clingy relationships. Because of this full moon, maybe you have a huge meltdown in your relationship once again and you are forced and thrust into independence, you know, thrust into breaking off this connection and fending for yourself. Why? Because the sun is transiting through the sign of Aquarius. Now, this is just an example, by the way, but it's a very good example. The sun is transiting through the sign of Aquarius and the moon is transiting through the sign of Leo. You know that you deserve more, but for whatever, and you would be better off on your own, but for whatever reason, you had already, because of the way that the transits have already been, you have attracted this relationship or reattracted this dynamic within your relationship once again, and you are faced with the disappointment of clinginess or um, unfaithfulness, right? So you can choose to focus on the fact that unfaithfulness occurred and point your finger at that, or you can take a step back and realize that the relationship itself, that there were some red flags, the relationship itself was not, was an illusion in some degree, and that for whatever reason, you chose to blow past those red flags and make excuses for yourself, for the relationship, or whatever the case is, instead of confronting the fact that there might be abandonment issues or some subconscious fear about being alone, or whatever the case is, or you have to, you have this desire to fix people. Now, this is just an example, but I feel like for a lot of us, we can maybe potentially relate to this. Everybody's gonna be different. Let's say this is your career, and you are an independent person, or maybe you work in um, as a nurse. Let's let's use this as an example. Let's say you sun uh, transiting to the sign of Aquarius energy. You actually are in this space right now where you know that you're doing good for humanity. Humanity. You love to show up for your work, and you're moving from a space from your heart. Moon is in, in Leo is activating that. But however, you are overburdening yourself and saying yes to all these different projects because you feel like it's your purpose or or you feel like you have something to prove and you end up falling into like a martyr type of position and going home feeling burnt out, overeating, overextending yourself and your feelings of self-worth and self-value are crushed because of the way that your boss treats you and the way that the, the hospital itself has, has been treating you. You can choose to focus on the fact that you haven't done enough or because that's your trigger and that's how you initially feel, or that illusion, which is not true, it's not that you're not doing enough, it's that illusion, that belief, actually represents the fact that you have allowed yourself to be in a position where you are taking on too much because internally you believe like you're not, that you're not good enough, and you have to maybe work on your boundaries and say no instead of say yes, or maybe put your foot down and tell these people like, listen, you can't talk to me this way. And it's not my job to save everybody. I wish I could, but I can't, it's not realistic. And clock in and clock out in the way that, you know, protects you so that you can show up as the healer that it is that you are because you are living in your truth and you are living in your purpose, but certain things do need to be adjusted. So those are two examples that, is that I can give to you, but they're activated by the full moon. Do you see how the full moon is bringing to you some level of supreme awareness, but you have a choice in where you decide to look at how this information gets 
um, I almost want to say like recorded by you, meaning like this information presents itself to you or this problem presents itself to you. When you go to solve the problem, what are you focusing on and what becomes your 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 what becomes your focus? What what is the highlight of it? Are you internalizing it? Are you pointing your finger at external things? Or do you channel the energy of these planets right now because there is always a solution. The planets can show a lot of disruption within the charts, but at the end of the day, they're, they they also will bring a solution. And the solution here is Mars transiting through Gemini says, let's ask questions here. Let's be curious. Let's ask for help. Let's explore all of our options. Instead of settling and saying that this is the only way that we can do it, maybe we can look past the illusion, be inspired by the illusion to look for the actual problem, to look into the shadow self, to look into the psychology and create a solution that works not only for me, but for the benefit of humanity as a whole. I'm going to go ahead and take a quick break real quick and uh, give a word from our sponsor, Queen Bee Homestead, who whips up the best body butters I have ever, ever had the honor of smoothing all my skin, all natural ingredients all the time. Queen Bee Homestead actually just recently dropped their Valentine's Day blends, which are phenomenal. Uh, we're talking neroli, we're talking strawberries, we're talking cardamom, vanilla bean, girl, good, okay? And if body butters is not your thing, which, what do you mean it's not your thing? Um, you may have chickens, like I do. Queen Bee Homestead off also offers coop herbs, all natural coop herbs, premium herbs at that, because of course, and uh, you can sprinkle those in the in the coop and bless your chickens with not only natural pesticides, but they love the smell. It keeps everything nice and fresh instead of funky. And it's they sometimes they partake. I'm not gonna lie to you. I've seen my chickens partaking in some Queen Bee Homestead coop herbs. So I don't know. Maybe your maybe your chickens might like it too. I don't know. You have to ask them. There's only one way to find out, and that's by sprinkling those Queen Bee Homestead herbs in your own coop. Also, second sponsor for today's video is Bahati Life Apothecary, Bahati Life Shop. Guys, can we just take a moment real quick and just appreciate the fact that all this is coming straight off my head? Wow. Like, there is no notes. Like, I have notes here. Oh, look at that. In my queen, in my Bahati Life notebook. I swear I wasn't trying to do that. But, um, yeah, all of this is off the top of my head. I'm not, I don't have this pre-recorded. But anyways, back to our second sponsor, who is Bahati Life Apothecary, who... If you need to work manifestations for your highest and greatest good, of course, there you will find all of what you need from fixed candles with, again, premium herbs and oils, all hand fixed, to actual intention oils, which you can use to anoint your journals, yourself, <laughs> your, your own candles at home, little talismans, objects, crystals, etc., etc., and even your home what else? Oh, uh, ritual soaks. It, the list goes on and on. So if you need some magical goodies, some manifestation happening, which the full moon is supreme for that, definitely check out BahadiLife.com. Shipping is faster than ever, and you will always, always find authentic magical ingredients that will take you to the moon and beyond. All right, guys, go diving back into this podcast. All right, so thank you to our sponsors, and now back to the full moon in Leo information sharing session. Yeah, what I can see as I'm looking at these charts is supreme awareness. For a lot of you guys, something is being awakened within you too where you want to be front and center front and center and it comes from a good place. I I feel like you have some gift or some light that is that you want to shine that you need to shine and the platform, the stage is being made for you. Are you ready for that? For a lot of you guys, I want to make sure that you know that with these transits, yeah, they might have been very transformative in a lot of different ways and maybe even destructive. Maybe that's a really good way to describe it. But ultimately, this destruction has occurred for our highest and greatest good, whether you can see it right now or not. I was going to share maybe an example of how this has played into my life, but I tend to keep myself out of these type of charts. But I will say that looking back, some of the most transformative moments of my life have really set me up to be the person that it is that I am today. And I have gone through it 
if I can get through it, you can get through it. And I know that a lot of you guys are not only strong mind body, but you're spiritually strong. You are not someone who gives up. And these transits definitely reward the perseverer, the person who decides like, I'm going to keep showing up. And if I take a hit, I'm going to come back to tomorrow. And somehow it's going to build my faith. Somehow it's going to lay the foundation. And that's exactly what's happening. In the moment, it can be tough to see it. Because again, when we have squares like this in the charts, in the skies, we're going to feel the friction. Absolutely. But also know that you're not in this alone. And for some of you guys, you might feel a little bit more intense, but than others, but it will be temporary. And what you do with this can really set the foundation for your own future to set you up for tremendous success, for tremendous wealth, for tremendous abund abundance. I don't know why I said those three, but literally wealth is here in the chart, health, happiness, joy. But the way to do that is to continue to show up again and again, choose to show up. Also, Work your manifestation skills, you guys. This is not an era, um, a time in our history where we are going to look back and be like, my logical mind really saved me. The logical mind will play a part in your success and your stability, but your intuitive mind and your intuitive gifts are and will lead you. And if it's not your intuitive gifts, it's going to be your faith. Are you talking to your angels and guides? Are you talking to your higher self? Are you grounding yourself and working to clear your energy and working to balance certain things out in your life to make sure that you are able to feel supported and to, and to welcome in the energy of support because it is here within the chart. A lot of you guys are also tapping into the realms of unconditional love. Not only is this going to be in your intimate relationships, for example, soulmate connections and life partners and those types of connections, but motherhood and fatherhood is going to be activated here. The, the breaking or the building up of the family, even after things that have already broken down within the family, uh, personal transformation is definitely highlighted here. And it's there to lift you up into a space where you can not only unconditionally love others, but you'll unconditionally love yourself. And that's going to be absolutely tremendous. That's what it is that I can see within the chart. So I want to leave you guys with that note, please how to manifest with this. If I were you, I would work with manifesting self-worth, self-value, protecting the sacral and solar plexus chakras, activating them. Also, a lot of kundalini awakening type of energy here is first and foremost. A lot of you guys sometimes look at kundalini energy and you think about sexual pursuits, but it's more than that, and I would even suggest that maybe you don't bring in sexuality into this, that you go through kundalini uh, meditations, there's movements that you can do to activate the, the, the base snake at the, at the root of your chakras, at the root of your body, your energetic body, and start awakening in that way. There's been a huge abuse in sexuality lately, so I don't encourage that right now. That's why I've been dragging my feet to do the sex magic podcast. I feel like some of you guys might abuse it. I don't want that to happen. Spirit says that it was a good idea, but also to wait on that. So I'm gonna wait until these transits kind of even themselves out a little bit. At the end of the day, I'm always gonna honor what spirit tells me to do because I would never defy that. I'm not gonna defy that. But back to you guys. Um, yeah, I'm definitely seeing a lot of Kundalini awakening and um, enlightenment, coming really close to enlightenment for a lot of you guys, exploring personal enlightenment, exploring your spirituality, exploring yourself as a whole, not being defied by certain things. I'm also seeing, um, or certain titles, I'm also seeing this, el this element of unity, not only uniting with hum hu other humans, but uniting specifically with the divine. There's this beautiful aura, this beautiful bl bl um, energy of bliss and peace that's been radiating, radiating down from the cosmos. To be honest with you, I've sat with this. I've sat with this, I've meditated on it. It's been showing up a lot lately, a lot lately. And I can't tell, I'm gonna be honest with you, I, I'll always keep it 100 with you. I can't tell if this is the angels and our guides or if this is some type of alien force that's out in the solar system i know i sound crazy right now but if you know you know i don't know if there's some type of alien force or some type of spiritual source that's kind of beaming 
sending love vibrations and healing vibrations down here on earth that has been so clear and so evident I think it's because they know that we're just going through it right now so shout out to them but I just feel that if you open yourself to unifying with the divine that energy is going to be felt more ample in your life and I want that for you all right my loves wow that has been my what I can see for the full moon that's going to be happening in this, again in the sign of Leo this is going to be February 5th I have the charts pulled up for 1 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time but to each their own you guys you don't have to spend exactly right on the dot um, that night or that I'm sorry that day working your magic it can be a little shortly after that that's what I like to do I typically wait for the Sun to drop and then I start working my manifestations having said that you can find me working my magic of course at bahadilife.com I'm I will be making a lunar oil too actually not only for the Leo full moon but I'm gonna be recreating the protection oil just because I feel like for a lot of us we can totally use it I know myself I can use it there's good energy out there and there's also energy that kind of feeds on light so this oil is definitely designed to protect you from those from those energies and you can use it to anoint your crown chakra make sure that your crown chakra is covered and you should be good you don't have to worry about it okay wow thank you guys so much for hanging out with me once again at Bahati Life Podcast please make sure that you are subscribed to the podcast and if you're tuning in on Bahati Life YouTube Make sure you're subscribed there because there's plenty more videos where this came from. Bahati Life merch just dropped. I'm clearly wearing my crop tops. So cute. And also the notebook is there. Vintage notebooks if crop tops are not your thing or if you want to treat yourself to both. All right, guys. Until then, I will see you guys in my next video, my next podcast. I'll see you later. Bye.